Right, I'll also introduce my uh, co-presenter, Phil Tilly from uh, Alcatel. And uh, this is really to give you, by way of an introduction to um, the Cloud Ethernet Forum, but also what we're uh, looking to achieve and why it's a larger problem for the industry. Um, so we're going to do that by just sort of sketching out the, the problem, talking a little bit uh, from Alcatel's point of view why they've uh, been involved in the forum, and uh, then I'll talk about some of the, uh, the work that it's undertaking. Um, right, so just in terms of um, who is the CEF or who are the CEF, depending on how grammatically um, you want to do it. Um, so I'll, I'll cover off that, so who are the member organizations and so on. Um, really, fundamentally, the, the objective is to look at what are the challenges of scaling cloud environments um, for cloud service providers, end users, uh, enterprises, and uh, eventually you and me who have to use these services as well. Um, particularly with a focus on, on Ethernet as the enabler of that, and I'll explain why that is. And really what we're taking is, uh, is an approach which looks at multiple different parts of the industry because this covers a lot of different, uh, a lot of different players, network service providers, data center providers, equipment manufacturers, and so on. Um, but really this all becomes driven by a customer requirement. And that customer requirement is what we use every day when we connect to a service from Google or Salesforce.com or Azure, or Office 365 or SAP, all of these sorts of things, these, these infrastructures need to react to where we're connecting to them, the information that we're allowed to see, the regulations that govern it, uh, the reliability that needs to be in place so that we can, uh, we can build a business on it. So with that, um, I'll just uh, hand over to, to Phil. Great. Th thanks a lot, James. So I think... Um what I want to just do is sort of give a vendor perspective and what we see and the reasons why we think uh, we need a, another forum, um, specifically Cloud Ethernet Forum, and sort of just talk sort of a couple of slides quickly as sort of some of the background. And as I say, um, as a vendor, we're a member of many, many forums, many standards organizations and everything else. And uh, when, when, again, another one gets proposed, you look at it sort of quite uh, critically and say, oh, God, here's another excuse for another load of engineers and marketing people to travel around the world and cost us a fortune. Um, so I, I think it's worth actually sort of just dialing back and say, why, why are we behind this one? Why do we think it's relevant? And why are we prepared to sort of justify time and investment and money in it? Um, and then hopefully... Uh, um, then sort of pass back to James to go through a little bit more of the, the detail on the forum. Everything we talk and hear about these days is everything is about the cloud. The cloud is everything. Um, and, and, but basically, if you look again, and historically myself as a networking guy, and, and you look and say, OK, if we look to cloud infrastructure, where is it? And where are we in the preparedness to deliver cloud services? And you know, just generally sort of fairly quickly looking at this cloud infrastructure scorecard, I think you know, we're at a stage where virtualization of compute and storage is, is there, um, pretty readily adopted. It's now very easy and possible to get, obviously, uh, compute online within, uh, within sort of uh, minutes, if not seconds. Um, it's virtualized, instantly available, and very easily consumable just by buying a, sort of putting your credit card details over there. However, the network is still at a space where it still takes uh, days, weeks, and very rarely hours to actually get the network connected and as easily consumable as that uh, cloud. So I think you know, we've still got a question mark as to how consumable the network is. Um, and that's one of the big industry challenges we're facing here. So you know, again, as we move and take that forward into the criticalities of moving into this cloud era, what are the real critical issues that we have to worry about and overcome so we can actually get to a stage where the network is no longer the bottleneck for delivering new cloud services and applications. So again, you know, we need greater agility. We need services to be more instantaneous, um, and that's network services in particular. Um, so again, the data center and its component parts need to become a part of the network requiring automation and abstraction. So we need the network to become automated. We need to be able to abstract uh, network capabilities and provide those up to the higher compute layer. So there's sort of you know, work ongoing and there, but it still needs to uh, continue to evolve and there's a lot of focus in area there. And some would say that's the area of SDN, but basically it doesn't matter what you call it, that's what has to happen. 
Then also in this cloud area, the speed at which things are happening and doing is we're, we're seeing and sort of we have to move from closed, you know, historical sort of stovepipe developments, as it were, um, fiefdoms of development, corporations sort of being very guarded on their uh, intellectual property. I think with the cloud era, we're seeing much more openness. And with that openness, we're seeing a sort of greater speed and development activity. Um, so again, you know, and... and uh, so, so we need to sort of uh, engage as vendors need to engage more in the speed of change, constraints on development times. I mean, we need to share to really meet the consumer appetite for cloud-based services. Um, you know, and so I think through open collaboration, we can resolve problems faster. And so we're sort of, again, as, as, as vendors, as a sort of vendor, we're sort of very conscious and very aware that we need to work together with other parties and build sort of an open ecosystem to make things happening. Um, and then there's sort of bridging domains. You know, again, we've got IT systems providers doing application development, uh, server virtualization, all the compute storage stuff going on in the data center is one typical team uh, or group or ecosystem of partners. We've got the network vendors, um, such as Alcatel Lucent, again, group, group of people, understand how to get you know, the internet growing to the way it is, how to get uh, traffic ever faster between multiple locations in a very clear, managed, reliable, multi-tenant environment. And then we've got the service providers as well. Again, um, obviously, trying to work to put these two elements and two groups together. I think, I think really, to make this cloud work, and this is where this forum sort of starts coming in, is actually we can't have... Uh, Etsy doing one thing, ITU doing something else, um, and, and, and you know, the, we need a forum where we can bring together the IT systems providers, the networking equipment vendors, and the service providers. And that really is sort of where we saw sort of the, the Cloud Ethernet Forum as a unique forum where these three groups can come together and really remove this divide between the network and the data center. So no longer, currently today, there's a pretty strict divide at the edge of the data center. It's called an edge router that sort of controls access lists from data center to the network. We need to remove that barrier and remove that demarcation point so we can actually automate the delivery of applications from there through to end users. So, so really, I think that's where we see this forum coming together to bridge those domains through um, Bring these sort of uh, things. So, so really enabling the network to make the cloud. It all sounds very complicated, right? And that's good because it is. Uh, <laughs> the clouds, cloud services market is interesting because it's grown very rapidly and it's grown very much more rapidly than I think anybody, at least from the network side of the business or um, in, in some cases the equipment vendors and so on ever expected. And that's mean, meant that there's been a series of attempts to fill in gaps, to patch solutions, to create things quickly, to keep things moving forward. But there's not been a fundamental uh, look at um, all the uh, foundations that go to build up this, uh, these platforms. So cloud is happening. It's, it's real. It's here today. Um, and it's growing very quickly. Now, I think the infrastructure really needs to catch up with that, uh, with that growth. And there's, at the same time, there are a lot of other things that are happening. I mean, we see a lot of changes in regulation. Uh, we see privacy concerns, uh, particularly recently, and so on and so forth. So how do we manage all of that? So scaling cloud becomes very important. It can't be s uh, something where cloud is just a series of machines that sit within a data center, and then uh, that data center might be in the United States, and then I go to Asia, and then my experience is very poor because I've got to connect all the way across the world in order to get to the resources that I'm, I need to use. Cloud needs to adjust. It needs to bring content that's close to me. It needs to um, continue to scale to very large numbers of, uh, of machines, um, and also have these data centers which are close to the end users. So it can't just be a data center in the US, a data center in Europe, a data center in, in Asia, you need to get much closer to your customer. So Ethernet is, is really the fundamental technology that today, as soon as you take a, a, a physical server and plug it into a, into a rack, the, the network connectivity is then the Ethernet cable that plugs into the back of it. There may be all sorts of uh, fanciness that then happens over the top of that, but that's the fundamental piece that's being connected. So, Ethernet becomes 
something that exists at both ends of the equation. It's, it's plugged into the server, it provides connectivity within the data center environment, and it provides connectivity in the data center environment at the other end of the service. The question is also what then happens in between those two Ethernet environments. So Phil mentioned that there are a large number of different companies which are all impacted by this very rapid evolution and growth of, um, of cloud services. So I've named here um, five of them, and uh, we can add, um, as time goes on, a sixth one, which is, uh, which is enterprises. But data center providers, so these are carrier neutral facilities and so on, they themselves build very large data center environments with lots of customers in there. Their problem is how do you take several thousand customers and logically separate them from each other? These data center providers are now also providing interconnect services between different uh, cloud service providers and different network operators. Um, WAN service providers, such as uh, my employer, um, systems integrators, who then have the same task of moving uh, customers from legacy environments to cloud environments. Um, network equipment manufacturers, such as uh, Alcatel, and uh, cloud service providers themselves. So all of these have a stake in what gets built, and we all have to work together in some way. Um, this was something that actually worked up uh, this morning in, the, the, in a session earlier with the uh, CEF members and uh, prospective members, just to give a, a visual example of um, what we're trying to, to address. This is a very complex example, um, but in fact it's uh, almost the most common example we come across, which is a customer who has a virtual machine or an environment within their own data center, and they want to be able to extend their network to a cloud service provider on the right-hand side. Now, that then immediately involves four different parties just in the networking piece. So on the left-hand side, you have the customer's data center environment themselves and whatever it is that they might be doing in there, or it might be an outsourced environment through a systems integrator. There's a network service provider that's then responsible to take that to some mutual exchange or um, Ethernet handoff point which then provides connectivity into the cloud service provider, and then eventually a virtual machine that sits within that cloud environment. Now, the customer's expectation is that they have one unified service experience that goes from end to end. But in fact, a number of these parties do not provide SLAs around network performance. So typically, a, um, an Ethernet exchange or a NNI point, which uh, often takes place, as I said, inside a carrier neutral data center facility, like an Equinix or a Poresight, typically doesn't provide any kind of network SLA. The cloud service provider, so the piece from the edge of their network up to the virtual machine they provide, there's typically no SLA around that either. But the customers ask is, I need to understand what the network performance is all the way through that entity. And not only does this involve these four constituent providers, but underneath this there's a whole series of different equipment manufacturers that might be sitting there. There might be a, a different orchestration layer at the two ends. All of this needs to work together if we're going to have a proper end-to-end -end service. And that's really the remit of the Cloud Ethernet Forum. So what are we doing? We have a technical committee. We have a marketing and, at the moment, marketing and operations is combined committees. So the technical committee is responsible for a white paper that states the issue that we're looking to, um, we're looking to serve. And that uh, became available today. And uh, you've got access to that. Um, how does it get implemented? Marketing operations, um, the operations aspect becomes more and more important later on because that talks about interoperability, about how all those different parties might work together. So we've done a lot. This is something that's gone very quickly. We launched in, uh, in late May. Um, we had our first face-to-face -face meeting in, in late July. Um, today, in late September, we delivered the white paper, which is a collaborative work of 16 companies. So some of the technical issues that we're going to look at, I won't go into those in, in detail, but these form a starting point for some of the, task, te the te technical aspects that we're going to look at in the initial stages. And then as uh, time goes forward, we've got another face-to-face -face meeting in Seattle um, and a board meeting. And uh, then we're doing a, a similar event to what we did this morning where interested companies can come hear what the CEF is, going, is doing, uh, comment on the white paper, see how they can get, get involved. Next one of those we're doing is in, in Singapore um, in November. So this is really the, the areas that uh, the Cloud Ethernet Forum is, is working on. 
we're working very closely with the, uh, the MEF. The MEF provides a intellectual property structure. It provides uh, back-end uh, resources to support the forum. It reduces our costs to operate. It has a very robust uh, model um, for bringing to market uh, standards and certifications and so on. So we're very happy to be associated with the MEF, and they're a very important part of it. It's, happened, it's helped us to get to market quicker. So um, I was interested, if I could pick up your last point first, um, your relationship with the, uh, the MEF. Um, what exactly, can you expand on what you mean? I mean, it sounds like you're doing a very similar job as the MEF in many ways, um, which kind of also speaks to the question of why we need another forum, which you know, I'm sure isn't just an excuse for a lot of engineers to go swanning off around the world and, and meeting in exotic places, is it, Phil? <coughs> Um, so what is the relationship with the MEF exactly? Can you put a bit more flesh on that? So the MEF, um, as I said, provides, uh, provides what I would call the sort of back office pieces. So that allowed us to get to market uh, much quicker than it would have, and it's less costly for the members also that way. Um, so that is, is the basic things like um, collecting membership dues and, and all that sort of thing, but it also provides us with a collaboration environment. Um, so we have wikis and online um, tools to collaborate and the white paper was entirely pulled together using just online tools and online collaboration. So it's a big departure away from traditional way of, of bringing together these sorts of things where you'd have face-to-face -face meetings and conference calls and you'd exchange Word documents and all that sort of thing. We understand that's not going to deliver a result fast enough so we can draw down on the MEF's uh, tools. So there's that and then I, I, I mentioned it but I will say it again. The intellectual property rights structure that the MEF brings is, is great, and it's a problem that has plagued some other forums that they, um, members are reluctant to participate because of they feel that they're giving up the rights to their intellect, well, they are giving up their rights to the intellectual property that they bring to the table, to the forum. Here, we, we have a robust environment that more than 200 companies already signed up to previously. Where does the split between CEF and MEF actually come? Um, the MEF is about end-to-end um, -end service definition of Ethernet services. So I fully expect that the CEF will identify certain areas which are best handled by the MEF. So the um, ENNI there that I referred to, that's a, that's a standard that has been referred to by the, um, by the MEF. It's been brought together, built up by them, and agreed to by their members. But it may need to be adjusted, expanded, developed, or whatever it is to meet the needs of, of cloud. Um, similarly, there are other things which might be protocol level things that would be better off done in the ITU or the IEEE or whatever else it is. Again, the, M the CEF then defines the problem, the use cases if you want, and then takes it and sort of husbands it through the, um, through the uh, other committee process. So that's kind of the split. The CEF is, is looking at specifically the infrastructure challenges faced by cloud service providers, of which Ethernet is, Ethernet is services are a component, but there are also many other pieces to that puzzle, as I, as I stated, the end-to-end -end, um, of how that uh, service is managed and provisioned and looked after and um, traffic is, uh, is directed and all those sorts of things. Right. So, so Phil, what would you say was the, I mean, it, it's, it's quite a complicated message to put across, I think. Um, what would you say if you, I mean, if you're addressing a room for the journalists, I mean, what is the top level sort of goal of, of, of the CEF and why would they care? But, so I, the, the goal is really to allow us to bring to market, to, to break the barrier between the data center and the, and the network, to bring cloud services affordably to market for enterprises, big and small enterprises. Mm -hmm. it, and, and it's really, again, creating a forum where we can bring together multiple parties without any preconceived ideas that it's a networking forum or it's a data center forum, it's, it's actually, you know, we want to bring that to market. One of the reasons why and the advantage of bringing it under MEF is it actually gave us a, a, a quick bootstrap start, as it were, because the infrastructure is there. We didn't have to build a new forum from scratch. The facilities are there, so we can actually get operational much, much quicker so, to address this problem, because the market is moving so fast. Yeah, I mean, the, that also sort of speaks to the question about there are, there's a number of other cloud standards bodies around, um, some more or less successful than others. I mean, what, what, what's your relationship going to be with those? Uh, as I said, I, th I think what we do is we represent the, um, the needs of, of the members. Um, the members 
have said that there are things which are, you said, well, this is a, another forum, it's another opportunity. So it's been interesting, and I said this um, earlier today, in fact, that on the one hand, I've got people saying, well, you know, it's another forum and all that sort of thing, why should I join? On the other hand, I've had a ton of companies come to me and say, could you look at this because it's, it's not being addressed anywhere else, it's related to cloud, it's a real barrier to, to growth. So, so for example? Um, storage, storage standardization um, is, is one thing. Um, there's a lot of disparate different ways to connect storage area networks together, um, standardize that, put it on a commodity platform like Ethernet, much more scalable, much higher speed and all that sort of thing. But that requires wide industry adoption. It's not just one or two vendors deciding to do it. It's cloud service providers, it's net network service providers, it's all of these equipment manufacturers all working together. So it's, it's those sorts of, of things. So. I think that um, the question of, of how we interact with other forums comes down to the pieces which we need to own end-to-end, -end. so the sort of the end-to-end -end customer experience, SLA, provisioning piece, all that sort of thing, that needs to be owned end-to-end. -end. But we don't need to do every component of that. So if it's a problem that's best addressed at the control plane, then we can take that to the ONF and we, we have a relationship with the ONF. If it's something that needs to be done as a set of protocol level, then it's IEEE or ITU or whatever. If it's, a, if it's purely an Ethernet service definition, then we'd take it to the MEF. But then we still have responsibility to see it through that, that forum. And then there's a whole piece that sits in the middle, which is the, the guts of what the CEF looks after. So, yeah, so I think the, the, the challenge, this is where Ethernet, so, so Ethernet, where it's headed and where it's going with its popularity and growth is, it's becoming almost a, uh, a tradable commodity almost. So, so, so people want to, to deliver a service, an Ethernet service, it's a, it's a number of different segments of Ethernet. And you can buy and sell those Ethernet segments in the middle from different operators. As you do that, you need to actually be able to make sure that when you do go and buy an Ethernet segment, that fits into the chain and instantly operational. And so it's that speed of bringing that connectivity to play at the same time as you can bring your compute on board. And that's quite a, quite a challenge to, to get all those pieces working in an automated fashion. Mm. So, so kind of the difference, just sort of pick, sorry, I to pick up on James's point, I mean, just is that the MEF got on board with the, with the equipment manufacturers and persuaded them to build standardized ways of interconnecting and, 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 and putting services on top of their, their basic, their basic uh, um, network, I suppose. Um, Whereas your, instead, your approach is to go through the standards bodies. Now, isn't that a much more difficult and complex thing to do? I wouldn't say my, my, my approach is to go to the standards bodies. I would say that, um, so what the MEF has done very well is to bring together equipment manufacturers, network service providers primarily um, to define end-to-end -end Ethernet service requirements. What we're doing is we're saying, okay, you take that same model and you make it larger because the number of players involved in the cloud space is bigger. It's not just network service providers. It's not just equipment manufacturers. It's also cloud service providers. It's people who make orchestration software for cloud environments. It's the cloud service providers themselves. And uh, Phil alluded to it as, as well. It's the people who design and build networks today and the people who design and build data centers and applications and all that sort of thing very rarely interact. And so a whole lot of stuff has been done within the data center, within the application environment, that is simply not supportable today in a network environment, and, this, and the network doesn't meet the requirement end to end. These things can't operate in isolation, they have to be bridged. So take the, the MEF approach, but expand it larger because the, the ecosystem that it supports in cloud is, is bigger and has, other, and has other players in it. And that's indeed why you see that uh, several of the uh, founding members of the CEF are in fact not MEF members. So people like Citrix, for example, coming at it from an orchestration point of view. Um, HP, which covers a whole variety of things, systems integration, um, orchestration, you know, all sorts of things, and, and equipment manufacturing as well. So different sorts of people in Avaya as well. So obviously it's meeting a need of a community that was not served in its entirety by, uh, by the MEF. Okay, James, Phil, thank you very much indeed. And um, quick round of applause for them, perhaps. Yeah.